Today is Joe's day. And having lived in this world for 72 years, I hope you will be patient enough to be patient enough to listen to us talking about our friend. I was asked to talk about friends of Joe, and there are many here. Friend from the Lions High School, Amos Wako, sitting over there. Sally Kosge, sitting somewhere. And many more that I've seen in this congregation today. That's the reason why I'm wearing this tie, this dear Lions High School old boy's tie. And by the way, when a vice president, deputy president, men never grow up. Men are always boys. It's only women who grow up. <laughs> if you want to know that men never grow up, just ask a man what relationship they have with their wives. And the wife will tell you, your socks is smelling. Where did you leave your underwear? <laughs> men are always boys. That's why the connections and relations we make at boys last so long in life. It is there with a, with, therefore with a very heavy heart that I write this piece as a tribute to my friend Joe Nyaga, who passed on this month in Nairobi after short illness. A gentleman with a tremendous sense of humor. He was great company and a friend in need as well as friend indeed in the true sense of that famous saying. He had friends across race and color. He was omnipresent in Kenyan politics as a parliamentarian, minister and diplomat. He made a mark in history. I first knew the Nyaga family through our late father, the Reverend Canon Hesbon Shime Nyongo, who used to tell us stories about his days in Nanyuki during the Mau Mau. In 1953, my father had been posted to Nanyuki as a young Anglican clergy serving the King's African Rifles. We were not expected to visit Father, nor did he ever come home for holidays for the three years he served in the army. But he made many friends within the church in the Mount Kenya region, and one of them was Jeremiah Joseph Mwaniki Nyaga, Joe's late father. The others were the late Bishop Obadiah Kariuki and the Reverend Sospita Magwa, both of whom he had known during his training as a clergy at St. Paul's Theological College, Limuru, now St. Paul's University. These names were familiar to us in the many stories Father told us of his exploits as an Anglican priest serving in a war zone. From the very beginning, Many ties bound us together. Hence the title of my tribute, the ties that bind. In 1962, my late brother Agri and I joined the Alliance High School when the legendary headmaster, Edward Carey Francis, was heading the Alliance High School on his last year of service. Two years after that, Joe joined the same school. Agri and I felt we were meeting someone we had known for a long time, if only from the stories father had told us about his father. The years of the Alliance were full of joyful experiences, which may be remained printed in our minds, sometimes even romanticized, as nostalgia became the pastime of men rapidly being swallowed by adulthood and its many earthly responsibilities. Great ties that bind. The school motto at Alliance High School was strong to serve. It was instilled in us in hymns of redemption songs and songs of praise twice a day, morning and evening, except Saturdays. The sermons were not devoid of it either, nor were speech days and pep talks that teachers engage in when disciplining a boy who, for some reason, might have behaved contrary to school rules and the school motto. We were fully involved in extracurricular activities such as drama and music, whilst also walking hand in hand in the famous valley with girls from the Alliance Girls High School. We didn't do anything more, as Mary, Joe's sister, can testify to that. 
since she was in the same class with my sister, Susan. So if they thought we were looking after them, we also feared they could report on us. Great be the ties that bind. Joe was a singer of no mean repute. He belonged to a band called The Strangers, together with Abdallah Baker, Ben Swai, and the retired Bishop of Butere, Michael Sunday. Their own revival, ba revival, revival, revival band at the Alliance High School ecosystem were the Strollers, where Joe Mungai, Sami Mwangi, Ben Mumu, and Joe Jungaya styled themselves as the Beatles. One can therefore understand why Joe grew up the way he did, why he was such a stickler for decency, discipline, honor, fairness, work, punctuality, public service, and civilized behavior. Joe was a civil man, but always relaxed and self-effacing in many ways. He not only stepped into the footsteps of his father, JJ, but lived up to the spirit of the Protestant ethic that the Alliance High School instilled in the boys. Great be the ties that bind. Wind the clock forwards, and you will find that after I left the Alliance High School and went to McRae University as an undergraduate in 1971, I found that there had been many Kenyans in high repute, of high repute, who had trailed the place before us in that renowned university college, the only one of its kind in East Africa then. Such were men like Jeremiah Joseph Mwaniki Nyaga, 1940 to 1943, and Emilio Mwai Kibaki, who joined later in the mid-50s. And at Macquarie University, the motto was, the university motto was, and still is, we build for the future. In Latin, pro futuro edificanos. Emilio Mwakibaki, later to become Kenya's third president, who is remembered for Kenya's renaissance after many years of authoritarian rule, was served by both of us, Joe and I, as ministers. These are the ties that continued to bind the two of us as history was unfolding. Wind the clock forward again and I find myself at the University of Chicago doing my postgraduate degrees in political science from October 1971. Two years later, Joe also arrives to do his master's degree in business administration at Kellogg's Business School, Northwestern University in Evanston, a suburb of New York, a suburb of Chicago. But that the business school was downtown, not in Evanston. He calls me from a downtown hotel and announces, I am here, with a laugh at the end of it, as if I had seen him the previous day. So I go to fetch him and insist he quit the hotel to stay with me in my two-bedroom apartment in Hyde Park, the south side of Chicago, where the University of Chicago was and still is. Great be the ties that bind. Wind the clock forward and Joe announces again casually that he was going to get married after he had moved out and staying alone to Minera his school as well as the first National Bank in Chicago where he was an, he was an, an apprentice. I'm in tune introduced to a beautiful lady called Margaret a, dim, a diminutive school teacher from Scotland who had come to Kenya to pursue her profession at State House Road Girls High School in Nairobi. My sister Susan had just finished her teaching practice there and then joined the school with Margaret, teaching in the same school. Great indeed be the ties that bind through the indivisible hand of God. <laughs> 